coming to you from the M&M Exterior Studio in Nooksville, Virginia, this is Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle, the introvert's extrovert. She talks to people so you don't have to. For now. So I enjoyed the, the pit stop getting to chat about kind of your background, like right. your mental why. Right, right, right. Um, and it's funny because I feel like we almost might be doing the opposite, which I think is actually the more interesting of the flip of the pit stop full flush. Because what ends up happening is that people prepare for the pit stop. Right. And it's the like, okay, as a business lawyer, Brad, like, what are what are some things we need to know that most people don't know about business? And then we end up right. talking about that. And then the full flush is like, but why are you the way you right. are? And then I feel like that's always the part that people really like. Well, I'm just trying to so get myself invited you. back for another one. We can thank do a more you. like subject matter yeah. oriented. Well, we could do that now too. Like, um, and we could transition into that. Actually, we could have a whole other separate episode for right. you too. Well, before we go but, into that, I wanted to uh, bring up a couple things. Sure. Yeah. This is your First being with the rat race, mm -hmm. the rat race conversation. I wanted to chime in right. and say it was it hard to was it hard to get rid of the dependency on the job? I feel like a lot of people have dependency on the job they're in, and that is why they're resistant to change. The income or the status yeah, that they get how? both. Mm. I, th I think there's yeah. a dependency on the income when you think about dependency on the income things. was certainly. A massive lifestyle change. Um, yeah. I mean, because we went from when we first bought the house, I was making more than, than Beth was because she hadn't made partner yet because she worked there for three years in her practice. But then they, then she becomes partner. Um, so I was, you know, I went from being the primary, the, you know, sort of two to one breadwinner to, you know, she was the main partner. I was making a little more than me to me making essentially nothing. Mm -hmm. Um and then we started adding a little bit, but you know, enough to pay for the diapers, not enough to pay for the, um, but so that was certainly a change that, that change in status is, is hard because I mean, it is, I don't want to say emasculating, but it certainly massively changes the, the, the power balance. And it's not like we were battling for power, but if I feel like, well, I'm not, I'm not the breadwinner, yeah. what right do I have to a say in this? And it's right. not, and, and, and this is not Beth saying, well, you don't have a say in this. So I'm the, that's not what it was, but it's like the me of like, who am I in this relationship? I am the sort of the second rate nanny trying to take care of the kids, even though she's still doing, I mean, I did the vast majority of the work around the house, but right. she's still doing, you know, far more. If, if the genders were reversed, she's doing far more than a guy would be doing in that mm -hmm. situation. Sure. Now the, the flip side of that is, I had to do like, you know, the women's duties, like of cooking and cleaning and grocery shopping and, and, you know, and, mm -hmm. and being up in the middle of the night with the kids. But I also had to do the, you know, taking out the garbage and cleaning the garage and do, I mean, so I had, I have this kind of weird, like, well, those are guy jobs. So I'm still had to do a bunch of those, but also doing the stuff around the house. So we're trying to like figure out what, you know, what are the divisions of stuff where, but I mean, and this is not to say that she wasn't doing a, a disproportionate percentage of stuff vis-a-vis -a, -vis a one working um couple right so it was it, it's it's been it's been a journey trying to figure that out do you guys feel like you've been working on deconstructing gender norms because that's a big topic i feel like that could be um well, it could be a hot topic button right. or it could just be hey this is a good conversation we're having because you know why should things be women's work or men's work. Right. It's like those are stereotypically. But if it's that if you enjoy doing yard work, you know, vice right. versa, like, if, well, you know. and, but some of this is, I mean, I, I love to cook. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna still use the present tense, but in sometimes I, mean, I would use the, but I enjoyed it more when it was something I was doing to be creative and fun. And I like to make, you know, I like to make yes. night, like, Fancy, like, I'll go through cookbooks and go online and find like, well, this looks great. And that's fun. And cause I get, that's my sort of creative or at least used to be my creative outlet. Yeah. But when it's like, well, what am I going to cook for these? Something that both my wife will like and or be willing to eat because it's not just three sticks of butter and some meat, you know, yes. cause it's like, I kind of want to eat that cause I'm, <laughs> um, I mean, it might be delicious, but it's like yeah. really just not conducive to our, repeated attempts at dieting and she's better about it than I am, but, but also something that our, our kids will eat. And we're always that, that struggle with, I mean, if there's one area that Beth is very 
strict, not strict about, but tries to put is, is what the kids will eat. Yeah. Because, because she has seen like the super picky kids, Mm -hmm. you know, where like they'll eat chicken nuggets, mac and cheese and pizza. Maybe that's all Mm -hmm. they'll eat. And everything else is a struggle. Now she will say that our kids are picky, but relative and on the scale they are not they're pickier than we would like them to be yeah but you know but if the fact is that you know at a thai restaurant we can only get them to eat the the ginger chicken and the the rama and the couple you know oh my gosh that's I, amazing. I think i think we're cool with that okay yeah. you know oh, ours we're would not eat there rice, rice. Well, white, white plain rice. white rice I mean, with nothing in it and but. i still celebrate that because at least we can order them rice <laughs> well that's so True. Yeah. but that's so it's like that and then that's my that's the point i'm always the pushback yeah. it's like, well i know there's like you wish they were yeah. and part of that's my fault because i there are I'm not a, I, if I were to become a vegetarian, I would die in about a week and a half. Mm-hmm. I mean, I grew up, my parents finally gave up on me at like about 12 or 10. I don't know how old it was, but they used to make me eat everything on my plate. Mm-hmm. And so there would be like a pile of, of just cold, wilted vegetables there that I left to the end. And I would, we always had a glass of milk too with our, cause this was the seventies so and eighties. So I would like, I would learn, I learned how to basically, I think I learned how to swallow pills by eating my vegetables food. because I would like, I would sort of, you could put enough milk in your mouth to sort of create that emulsion where I could just sort of throw the vegetables in so they wouldn't touch my tongue, get them straight down and swallow it without actually tasting it. That was like the, and finally they just said, whatever, just, just eat what you eat want to something. eat. Um, they just finally gave up just right. like we all yeah. do. So, I mean, you reach I, that point. I'm pretty good with most raw vegetables. I'll, I'll mm-hmm. eat just about anything in a salad, but I mean, my wife loves asparagus and I, it just can't do it. Can't, oh, it just, I just can't stand the smell of it. Um, broccoli, I will eat in a stir. I'm, I'm, I'm quite good at stir fries in part because have I can. Have you done roasted broccoli when it gets crispy? I haven't tried that. Oh, it's them. so good. I have done that with cauliflower and she loves cauliflower and I can handle like, like a roasted vegetable kind of thing. So I'm always like, so we, we often default to the, you know, a salad kind of thing because mm-hmm. it's something the kids will eat too. But it's yeah, probably because nice. I'm not, I am not, I'll be really focused on the main part, the protein. Yeah. Like I'm, I can do a good job with that. Although my kids are like, eh, what's this? And it's like, you, I mean, I made like chicken marsala a couple <laughs> nights ago and it's oh, like no. every time. Well, but every time I make it, they're like, eh, what's that? And every time they like it, they oh. do like it. And they just, but they like turn their nose up at it. It's like, just, you do like this. I make this like every like two or three weeks. You enjoy this, but they're like, eh, what is that? Yeah. So, and it's like, what is this chicken? It's like, it's not chicken. It's pork or it's beef. Everything's chicken, even though they're like, <laughs> but <laughs> everything uh, is chicken in our house because of oh, Jeremy's although we have found, allergies. <laughs> we have found that you, I could take just about anything and you put Chick-fil-A sauce on it. And my, at least my eight-year-old, she will eat it. Cause you, I mean, I wish we had a special sauce. sauce. Yeah, we don't even have a special right. Although sauce. Although there's something, one thing even better. There's this Peruvian chicken place down right across from the, the Prince William Hospital uh-huh. um, that we don't get to very often because it's all the way down in Manassas. But we used to go a little more often. We get, they, you get the, the takeout, you know, whole rotisserie chicken from there and you get like four sides. And they have this yellow sauce that, I mean, you could, I think you could actually put it on gravel and it would be delicious. And you know, would love it, it. Would just, it is, <laughs> it is so, so good. Oh. And that's, that is my kids like favorite sauce, but my, oh. my other daughter, like the Chick-fil-A sauce is like, she'll Chick-fil-A put it on, sauce basically so we'll have a roasted chicken, a big chicken, whatever. And she'll like put Chick-fil-A sauce on it and she's good. Awesome. Um, but, but yeah, but I don't, I, because I don't love the vegetable side of things, I'm not mm-hmm. necessarily good. I make a really mean, um, green bean. So they have to be the French cut green beans because my, my kids are like, if you have the regular green beans, they're like, mm-hmm. oh. but no, you got to do it with enough butter and olive oil and the shallots is the key to it. The shallot, like a oh. whole bunch of shallots. They love them some, Dang. some green beans. So wow. that's, that's the cool. one thing I've got them to. They, they will always they will they will ask for seconds of that, which is like really. Uh, wow. As a kid, I never would have eaten that. We're so. just a very raw veggie, and fr- like my goal with them is protein, fruit, veggies. Right. Like, well, that's what we, so they eat like toddlers. Right. Still. Well, Beth always. I mean, we have to have a fruit or vegetable with every meal. That is yeah. a key. And sometimes it's like you know what we're tired, something like that, and we make a fruit smoothie. We made a lot of fruit smoothies mm. over the years, and you throw in a banana and some yogurt and some frozen fruit and some juice, and put it together and it's it's awesome and the kids yeah. will will absolutely they'll devour that uh, but it's always a struggle to try to find that i mean my kids will eat just about any kind of fruit um mm-hmm. and but partly that's my fault because that's what i like you like yeah. there's something i mean i don't know that my brain my tongue need to have those like sugar receptors i mean whatever it is 
fruit, almost all fruits and almost all meats I love and vegetables that just don't taste good to me. And I know you're supposed to try them. And, you know, we have to like, you got to try it 10 times. times. You know, it's like, you got to try it. And we, and we do that. And, and, but part of me, my part of it's my heart's not in it. Cause it's like, this <laughs> my is, heart's just not it's in like, it. I don't like this either. I don't blame you. It's yeah. like, <laughs> I think this is gross, but whatever. We'll try it again. So going back for more. So I was like, here we have another green bean casserole. It's like, yeah, it's not the same as the green beans. Like the saute green beans. They're all good. Yeah, so, okay. I think it's um, funny we're talking about food because I don't know if you guys could hear it. One of your stomachs was grumbling. It's like it was mine, so. <laughs> it was his. It was his. Um, yeah, what, was, what other thoughts do you have, hun? So funny. Uh, and what was that an answer to? Probably not the question that you. Well, I don't know. But that was good. I, I, the I like question that. started oh, off right. as the dependency, right. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow it went up about food. That's that's probably about right for me. Yeah, um, that's but, okay. But it for did, all of us. But, but I think yeah. the but the but the point I was starting to be. So this is like I. Go off and it's you know, okay. a million different directions. That's why we get along because I'm right. the same and I can pull us back in. Um, good, well, at least one of us can pull us back <laughs> in because I have to like go back. And bang, 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 do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, now I remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so like losing that sort of identity and the gender role mm-hmm. that, that is certainly lo- losing the having talking with other smart lawyers about stuff mm-hmm. um, all day long and just having that like intellectual curiosity and that those kind of conversations. Um, that certainly was, was difficult yeah. to give all that kind of stuff up. And then I'm just like, you know, an overeducated dad who's doing his best, but, you know, kind of bumbling along and not good at, you know, not good at the housekeeping side of things. And like go yeah. to people's houses and go, well, your house is, looks perfect. And mine's like, you're not allowed, you're not allowed inside I'm the front door. I'm having such a weird <laughs> experience with this where I'm feeling so seen I'm feeling so validated. And then it's making me feel annoyed. Like, why did I need to hear you? Whether it's, you know, just simply because you're another person, a man, whatever. But why is it that I needed to hear you say it to be like, my feelings do matter? I think, I mean, this is my, my so my pop psychology view. Yeah. I, I think it's both irrelevant that I'm a man, but also critical that I'm a man uh-huh. from this because... I am coming at, I am, I am validating your experience without any of the, my, the assumptions that I've brought to it growing up as a woman, Mm, mm -hmm. you know, seeing how, how my mom did things. So I I think the fact that it's like, it's a struggle, no matter who, it's a universal struggle. It's not because you're a woman and a woman has certain, you know, certain, has certain Mm. traits and they're like, you know, you're expected to be more emotional and more, you know, Mm. and, you know, women work together in communities and all that's true. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. I think that, I mean, women in the workplace, has is transforming the way people do things for the better. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is also the, so that pull of yes, but women are also supposed to be the caregiver, and women are also supposed to be. I mean, I I worked with women who you know had young kids, and they would you know have to leave at four thirty to go pick their kids off out of daycare. And be like, oh, she's leaving, and but and then have to work from eight until midnight mm-hmm. to get the work done mm-hmm. because she was in part because she loved her job, and I mean. One of them, you know, this one person who she tried to be stay at home mom and just didn't like it. Yeah, she want she needed that identity, and of that's course. okay. That's totally. She's okay. still she's still a great mom, and as, being yeah. a mom is important to her. But not, but only being a mom was not enough for her. Uh-huh. Which was so she had to find ways to work around yeah. being, and her husband worked too. And they, I mean, they they yeah. were a partnership, but yeah. certainly. And the guys who didn't leave, they were only not able to leave because their spouse. Right was able to, if they had kids, you know, to go get the kids right, for them. Right. So and, and so they would like call home and say, and, and yeah. some of them had, had stay at home wives mm-hmm. often who were like, had been, you know, a chartered accountant for like one of the big accounting mm-hmm. firms or a lawyer or something like that and had made that choice. And there was mm-hmm. a lot of people like that who had made that choice. And sometimes mm-hmm. they just juggled about who someone did something in the morning, someone did something yeah. in the afternoon. Um, but it's, but you were it's, saying with like the critical um, with the it's it, it's it's not relevant. Right, yet but, it is but the fact that, but the fact that I'm not I'm not coming at this. It's like well, yes, because women yeah. know that there there's expectations, mm-hmm. and you know you're fighting against those expectations, and you know women traditionally. I mean, blah 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 yeah. blah blah, and all that maybe can be valid, can yeah. be true and valid, but it's also it's like yeah, yeah, but it's also it's the same thing no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. Because yes, I I get it. I get the fact that it's it is both exhausting. And it's like, I know that my wife's day was harder than objectively harder in that she saw 25, 30, 40 patients Mm -hmm. for 10 to 20 minutes a piece and was like, go, 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 go. Exhausting. I, and I remember days where I had lunch at two 30 and because I just 
I was working so hard, intensely, and on calls, and that is harder. But also, it is also exhausting what I was doing, even though it wasn't the same thing. Mm. But just just it was being equally hard, but in different, in very different way. a- ways. Right. Yeah, and, and, and maybe that's the valid part. And, and it's not even necessarily equally hard. It is also hard. Yeah. It is also hard in its own way. It's emotionally hard. Mm-hmm. There are times where my kids will come home and they're like fighting and they're arguing. And it's like, and it's exhausting, not in the same way as being like super intently at work for several hours, yeah. but it also just sucks the life out of you too in a different way. <laughs> it's was was like soul crushing. Right? I mean, there's, there's different. And, yeah. and I, I think because when I'm saying it, you don't, I think when you, when you hear someone talk, you make all kinds of assumptions about them because they are a, a woman, because they're a man, mm-hmm. because they are, you know, whatever their, whatever their specific thing is. I think you make assumptions about people and it's like, I'm going against the assumption somewhat. So mm-hmm. when you hear the same things, you go, Oh wait, maybe there's a universality to that. Mm. Maybe there is something beyond the, yes, this is, this is the, the difficulty of a woman in the 21st century trying to balance work and home and which is, once again, all valid, mm-hmm. but it's also just a person trying to balance how the, how you do that. Yes. Um, and I think the more, I mean, like I said, now there's so much about gender roles right. and, and gender, you know, where did that come from, the creation? So I think the more, that's why I love these kind of conversations, because I feel like it's kind of exposing that general universal right. truths. And it's, it's not just it, one it, or the other. It is. I mean, I'm, I'm not a groundbreaker in what I'm doing, but it is, I'm certainly... I don't have necessarily the role models to follow to mm-hmm. figure out how to do that either and how to, how to be, you know, that, that stay at home dad. It's like, well, what kind of loser are you? Because yeah. you're just like some, like some guy who's not carrying his weight. Yeah. And even if people don't say that, there are certainly people I'm sure who think that. Yeah. And even if they don't consciously think that they subconsciously, that's sort of in there. It's like, well, who are you that you let your, your woman mm-hmm. be the one responsible and to take on all those financial burdens and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And, and whether maybe nobody's saying that, maybe that's just mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. but that's part of me going, I need to, I need to find a way, find other ways to help and to, to take those burdens back, which is why, you know, as I'm growing my practice and it's like, you know, I'm bringing some of that back, you know, in yeah. terms of like reclaiming that. And it's not just being a man. I mean, although there mm-hmm. are certain, you know, expectations for that, but also just in the, in the partnership of the, I mean, cause there's, there's sort of that, you know, there's that sort of expectation, like, you know, the, the lonely guy who's, you know, who's there working and he works hard and comes home and sometimes he's kids, but you know, that's just his, that's his lot in life. You know, mm-hmm. you know, the Willie Loman, you know, the, whatever it's like, your job is to sacrifice and make money for the family. The salesman? Yeah. <laughs> that's all I know about it though. I think I might've read it. I think I might've read it, but it's like, I didn't, wasn't an English major or the history major. So but still, I'm just like, impressed. I got that. Cause no, I wasn't did. a real, I, just I wasn't a real the, English. I uh, feel like I wasn't a real English right. major, but, but um, um, when I got that reference, I was like, hmm. But that, but that sort of that expectation of, you know, and that, and that's a gender norm too. Yeah. Um, and I mean, my wife experiences like where, and I don't think people are mean about it, but there's sort of like, oh, why don't you come to our little, you know, and it's like, but it's in the middle of the day on a Tuesday or something like that. Yeah. She can't do that. I have a fun story mm-hmm. with your wife as a doctor and how yes. like, you know, she has to deal with the gender norms. So we were at the ENT with our son mm-hmm. and we're waiting and one of our friends is another doctor at that practice. And so we're waiting for the ENT to come in. He comes in and the look on my son's face is literally like, oh, and he literally said, oh, <laughs> and the doctor looked at him. We looked at him. We were like, he's kind of silly. We're like, what was that? He's like, oh, what did he say? Just wasn't what I was expecting. He just, and we were like, oh, and I literally like put my hand up and I was like, we don't need to know what you were expecting. You can tell me about that later. Cause I'm like, where is this yeah. coming from? So we do the appointment. The doctor was very funny with him. So we get home that night and go to bed. I'm laying there and I was like, okay, we finally had time. So I was like, all right, what was weird? Cause I was like, was it his ethnicity? Like what was right. like, Oh gosh, what's this kid going to say? And he was like, I was surprised because it was a guy. And I just thought doctors were girls. Right. And I was like, Oh, when? <laughs> when? My kid thinks doctors are girls. Well, my, so it was just crazy. my daughters, I mean, their expectation of what women and men are supposed to do in a family is 
not what I grew up with. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're, they're, they're like, wait, so they're, I mean, we have to, especially when they were younger, I mean, they're older now, they, they start to get things, but it's like, yeah. well, no, a, a lot of times the mommies are the ones at home and the dad, and like, which is, I mean, it's great. It's avant-garde and different and yeah. stuff like that, but, but it just goes to show, I mean, kids, kids learn what they learn. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, we ruin them. They, yeah. they come out like pure and innocent. Yeah. And we impose our own, you know, our own biases on them. Yeah. And we try not to, you know, we try to like get out of that, make sure that they, you know, that we try to impose like the most, yeah. you know, understanding and open and, you know, those yeah. kind of lessons. And, you know, but, and then, then of course you try not to, it's like, you don't want to over teach things because people, I mean, even it's like, well, you can't say these words. And it's like, well, what words? And it's like, well, no, oh, I don't want to teach, I don't want to teach you the bad words. I don't want to, yes. I don't want to teach you. I mean, even, you know, when they're, when they're learning about, you know, in uh, learning about slavery in school and it's like, how do you teach that to kids? And it's like, they don't, I mean, because they don't even necessarily understand a lot of the stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. because like, well, why would, why would someone do that? Because someone's skin color is different. That doesn't mm-hmm. make any, and it's like, no, it doesn't make any sense to you. And that's great. But, yeah. Keep that, you know, hold on to that. Try to explain how some other people used to think mm-hmm. um, and try to keep it as a historical thing because yeah. I don't want, I mean, but yeah. It's, well, it's hard too because there is still biases that exist. Uh, and, tons of them. I mean, it's you know, like, modern stuff. So it is this fine line right. of you can't say, "Oh, that used to be I know, that well, way." You, you can't. And, I mean, because well, that's not true. Or you don't right? want to. Yeah, right. yeah. Like, but it's, but it's like, I, but hmm. but you, it's like, well, you know, some people you know, believe certain things that you know we don't agree with, and you know, yeah. um, so you know, we <laughs> the um, yeah, I don't, I don't raising get too, yeah. humans is hard. It's raising hard. humans is hard. I it's tell hard. You what it's hard. Did you have any other yeah. thoughts? Yeah. So. Yeah, because you got to talk for like eight seconds. And yeah. Like, once again, blah, 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 okay. blah, blah. That's, That's okay. okay. <laughs> I don't mind at all. That's okay. He's um, not the chatter. So just listening to the the answer to the question, who you are. Right. You go. You went into a lot of, uh, in high school, you were into math, science. Yes. Right? All about the numbers. Mm-hmm. College, you thought you wanted to do that, but you went into history. Right. Then you got a law degree. Yes. Uh, then you practiced law for a bit. Then you were learning how to parent. So it seems like you are always eager to learn something. I am. I think that's, I think that, I think it's very insightful that, I mean, yes, I I have this, this sort of quest for trying to figure, I mean, partly trying to figure out who I am and partly I'm just interested in stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I don't read as much as I used to in part because I just, trying to find those blocks of times. I read more stuff on Twitter than I should. <laughs> uh, just cause I, you know, I can get those little, like little 140 characters. Well, or... it's 280 now. Come oh, on. 280. Come on. I don't know. I'm so behind. Wow, you're, the you're, you're so, like, I was going to go with like 63. You're, you're so like 2017. Oh my gosh. You. I know. Um, I'm so old. Um, but you know, and that's also my like ADD brain where it's like, I can only read for like, the, oh, it's, cause then some kid's going to say, I'm hungry. I need this. Uh-huh. I need that. So I like find ways of whether it's listening to podcasts or like reading something. So I can just, I have a little gap here where I need to have my brain occupied with something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I am, I am interested in general knowledge. I'm always like, I mean, I do really well in games like Triple Pursuit because I know just like lots of random crap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Um, just cause I, I I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I'll, I'll read an article. It's like, that's really interesting. It has nothing to do with anything in my core person, but I'm just sort of interested in that thing at this moment. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't know. I just, I, I like, thing i like I'm learning things i think that's i think it's true yeah. i think that's a common i'm as i'm listening to you talk that's right. i feel like what i've i feel like matt has said very similar things my right. friend who went back to law school i wonder if that's like one of those common traits through a lot of lawyers it may be it's sort of their that thirst for well, knowledge i mean I, I make i make jokes about like going to law school and all this stuff i mean it is a great education it is mm-hmm. it changes the way you think and they warn you i mean the first day they have like a they have this you know, they have they bring all the first years in and they say you're going to, this is going to change the way you think about stuff. And they have this one example where it's like, you'll, you'll be watching a movie and you'll see a, a cigarette that's lit like in a, in an ashtray. And then the next scene, it won't be there. And it's like, you'll notice that. And you're like, well, what happened to the cigarette that was there? And it's mm-hmm. like, because it's a sort of continuity because you, you start looking at things and like, well, what, that doesn't make sense. And how does that, and what happened to that? Mm-hmm. And what could happen? And then you start thinking about like, what are the, all the 73 bad things that can happen? <laughs> And cause I mean, I, I've, I've had, I've had like one to one meetings, you know, with people yeah. I've met and, 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 you know, one, one guy said, it's like, you always like think about the bad things. And it's like that, I mean, yeah, that's not my life, but that's how I think when I'm, yeah. when I go in, when I put my lawyer hat on, it's like, well, what are the, 
all the bad stuff that could happen. And okay, and out of those things, which do we care about? Is that like really important or is that like, well, it could, but we're not going to worry about that. And, you know, you have to, you have to worry about like to some extent, you know, I, I've, I've drafted like 50 page, 100 page contracts for a certain kind of transaction. You know, that's a billion dollar transaction. But if it's a, you know, a hundred thousand dollar transaction or a ten thousand dollar transaction or a couple hundred dollars, you know, you can't do a 50 page agreement. People go, I'm not going to read that. So you have to think, <laughs> yeah. what, so what do we really care about? What, what, so we got to prioritize, like, well, I really care about, am I going to get paid? Am I going to get sued? Who's got, needs the insurance? You know, you try to focus on like the three or four things that really matter in yeah. a contract, in a transaction. Um, and yeah, I'm just bringing this around to the law eventually. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. Um, but, I actually just thought of a good idea for like, I don't know if it would be, it's probably not enough time to do now, but a podcast episode that could have the potential to lose people throughout it because it would be like way too much like, talking. Oh my goodness. Is, I'll come back for the next episode. But <laughs> it's like, I'm going to single handedly destroy oh. this empire that you built. So, <laughs> no. so well, they, she had this really great podcast and then this like, this lawyer, lawyer got on and he just on. like, did, like talked about lawyer, lawyer stuff. stuff. Like, I just oh, couldn't listen yeah. to it anymore. And that, that was not like law and order at, at all. all. Exactly. Um, well, Brad, thank you so much. I appreciate your time, your vulnerability, your honesty. I'm gonna cry. No, it was no. so amazing. You're amazing, Brad. Oh, thank thank you, you so much. You're and, amazing too. And this please. is this has been great. And um, I'm surprised at how much gold you were able to put all over. The, yeah, all the marble, all and the marble and gold. It's like, uh, well, thanks to Eminem. Does Eminem know yeah. about how you're spending their money? Well, you know, know. <laughs> nothing but the best. Eminem. We need to talk best. to a business lawyer before yeah. we get them involved. Yeah. <laughs> We got it. I know a guy. <laughs> we got to talk. He lives to in you. Maryland, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Brad. All right, thank you. And that's a wrap for now. Thanks for listening to Flushing It Out with Samantha Spittle. Music provided by twinmusicom.org. Song titled Night at the Dance Hall. Sound editing by me, Jeremy Spittle. A special thanks to our studio sponsor, M&M Exteriors. Visit their website at mmexteriors.com for all of your roofing, siding, and gutter needs in the Northern Virginia area. Visit our website at flushingitout.com and be sure to subscribe. This has been a Spitfire production. That was the greatest thing I've ever heard.